Hello everyone, this is Dr. Gerwig. We are studying public finance and one of the important topics in public finance is externalities. In this chapter, we'll learn about externalities, problems and solutions. So let's get started. In part one, we'll learn about externalities in economics. We will see that externalities can be positive or negative and they could be in the production side or consumption side. Let's get started. Okay, so here's our little roadmap. Okay, so in this roadmap, as you can see, we have this first part, we cover introduction externality theory. In the next part, we're going to focus on negative externalities, positive externalities, solutions to various solutions to the uh, externalities. And that's pretty much it. Let's get started. So let's talk about global warming and why it's an externality. In 2015, representatives from 195 nations met in Paris, France to negotiate an international pact to limit temperature rise around the world. So carbon, carbon dioxide emissions contribute to the global warming, right, which could cause enormous damage. So the cost of reducing the use of fuel, fossil fuels especially in the industrialized nations, is really big. So if you look at before, let's say, 2004, 5, 6, uh, USA, Russia, we were the biggest uh, carbon dioxide emitters in the world. However, today we are being dwarfed by the um, China, India carbon dioxide emissions. Okay, so some people predict that we will have to reduce... We will have to reduce our use of fossil fuels to the 19th century pre-industrial levels, which is going to be really hard. So I, I don't want to go into too much detail of this, but I want to show you why it can be a negative externality. Okay, so this is the average global temperatures between 1880s and 2020. And as you can see, um, global temperatures, average global temperatures have been increasing. So some people are like, well, it's just one, two, three degrees. Who cares? This is in Fahrenheit, right? So it's really low average temperatures. But this increase has been actually speeding up in last couple of decades, right? So global warming is a classic, classic example of an externality, which is a kind of market failure, okay? So what are externalities? Lots of students get these wrong, okay? So let's say... Okay, I am drinking um, something I'm not sh supposed to be drinking. Let's say this is instead of water, this is some sort of cleaning chemical, right? If I drink it uh, by mistake or knowingly, which is kind of crazy, but this is the only example that pops up in my mind. This is water, by the way. I'm just joking. So it's going to hurt me, right? If it's something I'm not supposed to be drinking by mistake. So that's not an externality. My action is having impact on me. Another example would be, let's say I got higher education, I'm in a higher tax bracket, I make more money than uh, people with fewer years of education, and then I pay more taxes, right? My dog. So, and I, I have higher uh, purchasing power, right? So this is not an externality. This is just my actions having impact on me. Okay, what are externalities? Externalities arise when actions of one party make another worse or better off, yet the first party, the actions of the first party, doesn't bear the cost if it's a negative externality or receive the benefits if it's a positive externality. So externality, presence of externality requires at least two parties. First party acts in a way. It can have positive or negative impact on the other people, at least, you know, the second person. And if it's a positive impact that the second person didn't pay for it, right, pay the first person. Or if it's a negative effect that the second person, negatively affected person, didn't benefit, uh, didn't get reimbursed for this negative externality, that's considered an externality. So externality, though, is a market failure, especially negative externalities. Because they are usually overproduced, right, in the production part. And it's even if it's positive externality, it's still market failure because usually positive externalities are underproduced. We'll talk about that. So government action may be required to improve welfare, but it's not always necessary for the positive externalities. So we have two types of externalities, negative or positive. Okay, so negative externality examples, acid drain. This is something really scary um, and 
imagine like the factory, all the sulfur, sulfur um, goes to the air and then it just travels, right? And then it becomes acid rain in some other locality, right? And it really causes corrosion of the vehicles and corrosion of all the structures. So that this is something that used to happen back in the day. And I have an a example for you from Turkey. I one time went to Ankara, it's the capital of Turkey, the country Turkey, to visit my aunt. And there was a curfew, like nobody was allowed to go to the streets because they were burning coal. It's a really cold town in the winters. They were burning coal and outside was extremely, it looked like dense fog, but it was just carbon monoxide. It was crazy outside. You can see, you can breathe. So government told us stay at home. So that's a negative externality of sometimes factories too. Global warning, warming and pollution in general. And neighbors love music. Everybody, almost everybody uh, suffered from this at some point in their lives, especially apartments. Um, positive externalities, for instance, research and development done at universities or research and development in general. A pharmaceutical company comes up with a new medication. They have the patent to this medication for 20 years. However, usually it takes about 10 years to develop and test the new medication. So after 10 years, it becomes patent expires. It happened, for instance, for the depression medication Prozac. Uh, way before, you know. Once the patent expired, their sales went down by 85%. But then it becomes helpful for the society and others to benefit. Another one is asking great questions in class. This is a positive externality. That's why I tell my students, please ask me questions. So make sure after watching this video, ask at least one question in the comments of this video for me, please. Okay, so let's talk about global warming a little bit more. Scientists believe that warming trend is caused by human activity, okay? Namely the use of fossil fuels. Fuels such as coal, oil, natural gas, gasoline produce carbon dioxide that in turn traps heat from the sun in the Earth's atmosphere. Okay, so this is the global temperature over time. So again, the stable shows global temperatures during the 20th century, right? We're in the 21st century now. So there has been a distinct trend upward in the temperature. Okay, warming trend has negative effects overall on society. So I I live in, right, I am a professor at Texas and I'm Corpus Christi. We live in South Texas and it gets really hot here. Summertime, 120 Fahrenheit, which is like we, we see degrees around like 45 Celsius, pretty hot. And it's very humid too. So you sometimes feel like warmer than it is, right? So the distributional consequences actually are different. In the U.S., warmer temperatures in most parts of the country, such as like New York area up north, it will improve our agriculture output and quality of life. Yes, we can, you know, we can handle the heat because we have AC. I have AC running right now. But in Bangladesh, this is a country that's near sea level. Much of the country will be flooded. They're expecting some of the ocean uh uh, countries in the Oceania is are going to be completely flooded. So, okay, why should you care about Bangladesh, right? That's the question. Also, why would you care about your professor? Because we're having lots of hurricanes. We're having sea levels rising in Corpus Christi is a sea level. So why should you worry about your professor or Bangladesh? If you find yourself asking that question, actually, that's a great question. Yes, some people would judge you like, why... Why are you saying why should we care about people in Bangladesh? But this is an example of a market failure. If you are asking yourself, why should I care about Dr. G in Corpus Christi or South Texas sea levels? You have identified what we call a market failure. Okay, so this is a market failure that arises from externalities. From your private perspective, you shouldn't care, right? Who cares? I don't care, which is kind of selfish, I understand, but... Usually people are like, well, what can I do? Let's talk about externality theory. Externalities can be negative or positive, may arise on the consumption or production side. So supply side, production externalities, or demand side, consumption externalities. So my consuming of something could hurt my neighbors. 
So let's talk about a negative production externality. So this arises when a firm's production reduces the well-being of others who are not compensated by the firm. So if a firm, let's say, produces uh, plastic and let's say they, they release the chemical sludge that's accumulated after production into a river, okay, uh, this is an example of negative production externality affecting people in town. But for instance, if let's say this, let me tell you this, this is a company that tell their workers, hey, this production may hurt your health and we're going to pay you this much more compensating tier, compensating differentials and uh, labor economics. So we're going to pay you and... There is no environmental effect. So if you are actually hurting your workers, you know, there's a risk at this job. Risky theory of risky jobs we cover in labor economics. And if they're being compensated and they're willing to work, there's no externality there. Okay. So negative production externality arises when a firm's production reduces the well-being of others who are not compensated by the firm. Negative consumption externality arises when an individual's consumption Reduced the well-being of others who are not compensating by the individuals. Example, uh, let's say I, I eat lots of donuts. I am eating 20 donuts a day. I am making this up. And my health is rapidly deteriorating. I am just really sick. I have blood pressure, blood glucose issues. And I started going to emergency service. My insurance is through my employer. So imagine I ran up like $5 million of medical bills, right? The insurance paid for it. And therefore, the insurance is going to be like, hold on a second. So Dr. G's bills really affected our insurance. So we're going to increase the premiums for everybody else. So economic researchers actually calculated the cost of one eating one burger about 10 years ago, when you eat a burger, right, it can, <laughs> it's going to have long-term effects in terms of weight gain. But just one burger wouldn't affect your weight, but it causes like food addiction in the long term. By the way, I love burgers, but in moderation. I'm not eating 20 donuts a day. Long story short, if I'm consuming one burger, the economist estimated the cost on the other insured, insured people as $2. So you're eating a burger, you're paying for it, you're enjoying, but you're costing the insurance. So the choices we make, the consumption choices we make can have uh, negative impacts on others. Another example, if I'm, let's say I am uh, streaming music and my windows are rolled down, really bad lyrics, right? And the music, uh, like explicit content, content coming out of my car very loud and it hurts my it hurts the mother who is driving her children in the next door and the kids are exposed to that the mother doesn't want to that's a negative consumption externality okay all right so the basic concepts and positive externalities are similar to those negative externalities and we are going to focus on negative production externalities in the next part a couple of things i'm asking you to do please Number one, subscribe to this channel so whenever I post a new video, you will get a notification. Number two, please hit the like button at the bottom of this video. Number one, it looks really pretty when you hit the like button, like a bunch of stars and stuff come out. And also, once you hit the like button, it actually, the YouTube algorithm pushes this video to other students who are trying to get good grades in their public finance classes. All right, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.